Today we live in a fast-paced world, with high-speed connections, food to go, and products designed to be replaced easily. We're far removed from any of the struggles and triumphs previous generations experienced. But the distance between today and 100 years ago is not impassable. Come along as we explore our connection with our history through an institution often taken for granted, the Small Town Museum. Daily life from previous generations has been preserved through the efforts of volunteers committed to rescuing the objects of the past. These museums offer just a glimpse into what life was like for early generations in eastern Washington. And they are so much more than just a collection of objects. Though the items on display may be similar, each museum has its own unique story and identity. Next we'll travel east to the quiet community of Fairfield. Like many of the farming communities of the Palouse, Fairfield today only offers a brief glimpse as to what it was like during its heyday. The once thriving farming town connected by the railroad has since faded, but the tradition and importance of farming remain at the heart of this community today. The current residents' pride of their families and their town's history is made apparent when you step inside the Fairfield Museum, located in the old city hall. Well, welcome to the first part of the Fairfield Museum. In this outer lobby, or the front room we call it, um, are a number of things, mostly musical instruments and uh, old photographs and things like that that we have collected over the years. The other important thing I think in this room, before we go into the other display area, is that there is an enormous collection of books here that were published by the Galleon Press, and that was uh, owned and operated by Glenn Adams. He's our postmaster here, among other things, in Fairfield and is a, it was a terrific uh, printing operation that he had here. And he's won a number of awards, all the way from Harvard and Yale to a prestigious award by the state of Washington. Well, one of the most prominent things here is the jail. This was the jail, uh, one rumor, so we couldn't have more than one person in trouble at a time in uh, Fairfield, and that again was back in 1910. Right in here is the replica of the old original Bank of Fairfield. It was robbed once, and $663 was taken out in silver, so there. So this is uh, pretty much an exactly, well it is. They moved this thing up here lock, stock, and barrel when they made the new bank. So now we go into the new part of our museum, and this is something we're really so very, very proud of here in Fairfield and uh, in Southeast Spokane County. This building, which is quite large, was added on to the old city hall and um, it was uh, through a, a huge grant of money from some of our local citizens that were able to do this. The memorabilia just started to flow in. I, I think that, uh, I think the collecting of the things is my favorite part and arranging them in some way that they tell a story and are available to people. Other than that, um, I couldn't say anything especially was my favorite. But we had people from all walks of life bringing in things, and they made the museum. This is a community museum. The things that are in here have been brought in and given to for us to take care of. So that's all we're doing here. Well, they really are really fortunate. I think we're also fortunate to have people in the uh, area that um, that are very familiar with the history of the communities around us, and that's that's been one of the highlights to me. Something that has been the mainstay, at least for the years right now, are all the graduating classes from Fairfield High School 
and they run from 1913 through 1960, I should say. In 1961, Fairfield, Latah, and Spangle consolidated into Liberty High School, and so that's the end of the graduation pictures. But these, uh, uh, looking back through these, you'll find pretty much all of the pioneer families that were here um, at the turn of the century, and of course their descendants as we get down through time. These family histories will no doubt continue to be preserved as the museum finds new ways to carry the community's memories into the future. We're in the process right now of uh, forming our own website and doing some, uh, some other kinds of things that we think will spread the influence of the museum and get people access to it that aren't going to get here otherwise. These museums are living treasures, not just for the pieces stored in them, but the lives connected to them. The volunteers and staff who make them run bring a wealth of local history to life, illustrating how much our connection with our history is not fueled simply by objects, but by our connections with each other.